first passed the idea of a $200 a month license to gain more access to ChatGPT for an individual user may seem crazy to those of us used to a $20 or $30 per month fee. But that's what OpenAI just announced on the first day of its holiday season, 12 days of OpenAI events, with the release of ChatGPT Pro. So what is ChatGPT Pro? What is OpenAI up to with this new tier? And if you're a ChatGPT Power user, do you need to buy it? But first, a quick introduction. My name is Nick DeCorsi. I'm a consultant who specializes in helping smaller businesses get the best from AI. Check out the links below if you're interested in learning more about me or my services. And as always, if this video is useful to you, please give it a like to help it get in front of more interested people. And if you want to see more, please do subscribe. Compared to the weirdness that we got from OpenAI during the holiday season in 2023, where they fired their CEO and rehired him again in a span of days, releasing a new ChatGPT tier, which is 10 times the price of the one most paid users have probably signed up to, doesn't really seem crazy at all. First of all, while the expensive ChatGPT Pro was the headline announcement of OpenAI's day one event, the real news for everyone was that the O1 preview model we've had access to for several months now has been superseded by the full and reportedly better O1 model. For ChatGPT Plus subscribers, the default model in ChatGPT is still GPT-40, but you will have the ability to choose and consume chat with O1 too. The announcement format looked like they'd set up a room for two people and five minutes before kickoff, two of their friends had joined so they had to squeeze into the camera frame. This wasn't a mistake, they did the same for day two too. The inclusion of Sam Altman awkwardly interrupting his colleagues with lighthearted commentary. But the general idea, I think. Rookie numbers in this Yeah, business. rookie numbers. Rookie numbers, <laughs> okay, yeah. Really made this feel more like an SNL skit than a big tech product reveal. With this level of informality and the 15 minute duration, I'd strongly advocate for this to be an approach adopted by Microsoft ahead of build next year. The message was clear. Compared to O1 Preview, O1 gives better results, particularly highlighted was coding, math, and scientific results quality uplifts. O1 is quicker at responding, particularly to queries that don't need much thinking. It's multimodal, and for those not using the ChatGPT chat interface, new options will be coming to the API to make O1 an optimum choice for agentic needs where enhanced reasoning is necessary. I wonder if O1 will be coming to Copilot Studio generative orchestration, or maybe it has already. Your $200 upgrade to ChatGPT Pro gives you additional access to O1 and other features beyond those available in ChatGPT Plus. But the real selling point isn't really a new model, but a pro version of O1 that behaves in a different way, potentially better tailored to certain power user use cases. And based on some of the performance results that were shared, it's clear this pro mode offers some uptick in quality. When O1 Preview was released, the big advance wasn't that it was an objectively better model than 4.0, but if you gave the model more time or resources to think, it would get a better answer. We already knew this from prompting strategies people had developed for earlier models, and O1 simply seemed to integrate this understanding of making AI take its time and truly think about the problem, being at the core of getting objectively better outputs. We often think about the immense computing needs of training AI models, but individual AI prompt response pairs also require compute. And in comparison to something like a Google search, a lot of compute. As models grow, this need becomes greater, but so too do these needs if you are iterating through reasoning steps rather than just getting a request and creating the best response. So you could imagine that for most AI tasks, output quality is a metric determined not only by model sophistication, but also by how much compute time with that model is allowed for a specific request. When we talk about this, you'll often hear this referred to as inference cost or the cost of inference time compute. Based on how ChatGPT Pro was described, I imagine that your $200 a month is primarily giving you access to a far greater allocation of inference time compute, meaning that for things that are compute heavy, like advanced voice mode, you get unlimited consumption. And in adding Pro mode to O1, you're getting access to a model tuned to spend a far greater amount of inference compute on validating its reasoning and ensuring the quality of its response. In describing the product, Sam Altman said as much. A lot of people 
uh, power users of ChatGPT at this point. They really use it a lot and they want more compute than $20 a month can buy. So we're launching a new tier, ChatGPT Pro. But that's just telling you what ChatGPT Pro is. The important question is, if you're a ChatGPT Plus subscriber, do you need to upgrade? Adopting AI comes with undeniable productivity and efficiency benefits, but also a new set of risks. As more businesses embrace AI or are impacted by AI through their employees using their own tools, finding ways to bring AI users up to speed on these risks and how to mitigate them is essential. My new on-demand course, Responsible AI for Business Users, gives you an overview of AI safety and responsible use across seven modules and easily digestible bite-sized videos of 10 minutes or less. You will learn why generative AI makes mistakes, how to identify those errors, and how to ensure your proprietary data or private information stays safe when using AI. You don't want to be the next cautionary tale for what can go wrong with AI and risk the reputational damage, business challenges, or even financial impact that can result. Ensure you and your team are equipped with the knowledge that can help you stay safe and use AI responsibly. Check out the link down below to find out more about Responsible AI for Business Users. The reality is that I don't think OpenAI has made ChatGPT Pro for most of us. If you look at the fact that as part of their announcement, they are making grants for ChatGPT Pro for research, this is a tool for people who are hitting the limits on what they can get out of ChatGPT for certain niche use cases. If you're using ChatGPT to tighten up the language in some emails or plan a project, or even some like coding or research, the ChatGPT Pro isn't designed for you. It's almost just pointed at those use cases connected with Sam Altman's utopian dreams for AI, where it's a force for ultimate good, pushing forward human knowledge. And if I want to use ChatGPT Plus to generate some amusing holiday themed images, I'm not going to get much from a pro subscription. The exception for this would be if you have Plus and you regularly hit the caps on usage, which has been around 80 messages every three hours with 4.0 and 50 messages a week with 01 preview. However, I'd rank myself as a moderate to sometimes fairly heavy user of ChatGPT, and I've rarely run into any limits on service. But obviously everyone's situation will be different. In their day two announcement, focusing on reinforcement fine tuning of 01, again, it's clear that what OpenAI is pushing forward is not AI tooling that's to help the florist down the street manage her order load better. There are many, many businesses or other types of use that will undoubtedly be helped by advancements like this, but they are for above average users of AI, not in terms of skill, but in terms of objective needs from the technology. For your construction firm, bakery, car dealership, or small law firm, there's a whole bunch of options to choose from, including most likely Microsoft 365 Copilot or Gemini for Google Workspace, depending on the existing productivity platform, but maybe also ChatGPT Plus or Teams. But for those niche use cases with lots of reasoning need and lots of data, there are these types of frontier products from OpenAI. Just after this video goes out, we'll get day three of OpenAI's 12 announcements. And I expect somewhere in there in the 12 will be Sora, their video generation model. And again, I expect this to be priced and set up in such a way that it'll be a deal for users who really need it. But for an average set of needs, we might be waiting for Microsoft's ClipChamp to get a subset of those features in the months or years to come. I certainly expect some consumer or small business focused announcements from OpenAI, and for day-to-day -day AI chat, they remain in the reigning champ, I think. But this may be a reflection of the fact that there's a market that interests them a lot more, and is much more interwoven with their initial world-changing mission. Let me know what you think. Will you be upgrading? Thanks for watching through to the end. Until the next video, bye-bye.